hunt to do yours again. Okay, and then Cal, just clap again for me because your webcam is in a bit of a... Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, have fun with that one. Editing that on Sunday Ethan. Yeah, f you, you prick. Uh, oh. Got him. He has to sit through the edit, not me. Future Ethan be like, I hate this guy. Just you like putting a bottle on the table. <laughs> Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the HGO Podcast. I am your host for today, Ethan, and as always, I am joined with my good friends, Hunter and Kyle. Hey, guys, how you doing? You get to see me this week, you guys. What a privilege, you know? Well. <laughs> it, 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 is. it is an absolute honor to see your face once again after the dark pe the dark ages that was last week. Uh, but no, uh, you doing all right, Kyle? Yeah, yeah, can't complain. Can't complain. I've like had such a busy week that I'm just dead. So uh, apologies in advance if I uh, look a bit dead. It's because I am. Because damn, work be exhausting, and I keep biting off way more than I can chew. Anyway, welcome back to the Show Podcast. Uh, every week, uh, us three we come together. Usually it's we said like friends come together, but it's just us three, and we're not friends. We're just <laughs> we're just acquaintances. We're business partners at this point. Um, <laughs> business partners. We, we only business talk to each other once profit. a week. Not my to problem. To be fair, when we do talk to each other, it's for several hours at a time, though. Yes. It is. You do. You genuinely get like a sixth of our conversation on the show. A lot of it is <laughs> uh, out of context. Uh, but hey, yeah, uh, welcome back. Where we come together to talk about everything that we love in the world of gaming. You can find us on podcast services. Just search your favorite for Hot Gamers Only, where you can find us on there. Uh, or if you want to look at our stupid faces while we do this show, you can go to YouTube dot com forward slash hot gamers only and hey could you hit us with a sub i'm setting a sub goal for 125 subs by christmas it's easily doable if you're new here which we've had quite a, a lot of new people come to the show recently um on both video and on podcasts so if you're new even if you do only listen on podcasts one we do appreciate the followers and the reviews and all that that's great but if you could head on over to your youtube account go to youtube.com forward slash hot gamers only and hit us with a sub it does us a world of wonders because it helps us with stuff it just helps us youtube promotes us more um reviewers like uh publishers might take us more seriously when we ask for review codes um yeah. and it just it helps with the algorithm a lot if you guys are interacting in that kind of way so we'd really appreciate it we don't like to preach too I much the on the metroid show. dread episode in my own recommended the other day i was like I oh keep, yeah. <laughs> It keeps giving um, me the HG, the HGO uh, Persona 5 Royal spoiler cast episode in my recommended. I'm like, does. I'm like, I don't have um, that much time anymore to listen to myself gush about a video game. But yeah, any support on the YouTube would be greatly appreciated to help with the YouTube algorithm to help push us to new faces. And hey, if you don't want to do that, just tell a friend, share us with uh, people that you like, people that you don't. I don't care. Just tell people about HGO. We really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, we really do appreciate you hanging out with us each and every week. Uh, it gives us something to do. I can say that much at least. Yeah. Forces us to talk to each other at least once a week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, coming up this week, we've got plenty to talk about. We have got Sora being added to Smash Bros. We have Hunter playing Deltarune, finally. We have the Animal Crossing Direct and the horror that is the expansion pass. We have Gotham Knights and Suicide Squad uh, both getting new releases. Uh, sorry, new trailers and getting the same release date of 2022, which we'll see about that. Uh, and then we might talk about silent protagonists because that's been a thing going on on the internet because the internet loves to do a right little shit show every oh, once yeah. in a while. They sure do. Yep. Um, so yeah, we've got a long laundry list of things to talk about. As always, if you're only interested in a couple of them, head down to the description or on podcasts and on the video version. There's timestamps. So yeah, if you only want to hear about Sora, Animal Crossing, silent protagonist, go and hop it through it, do what you want, or hang out with us the whole way. Uh, I prefer if you do that because of the watch time, but hey, you do you. <laughs> if you just want to hang out with us for 30 minutes instead of the hour, fine by me. Uh, shall we start with Sora? Shall we just get Sora out of the way? Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like the best one to start with. Sure, let's do it then. So, Sora has been added to Smash Bros. Ultimate. Moving sure on. Has. <laughs> uh, so, how much have you guys played? Because we haven't played together. Usually we do a little DLC play together, but we haven't had time, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and how because of that, I played the classic mode for him, and then I played for about 45 additional minutes against computers. That's more than <laughs> me, if that makes you feel any better. I That's played... more than me also. I played for 45 minutes against computers, probably, and that's about it. Uh, Kyle? 
I did the classic mode, played three online matches, got him into Elite Smash, and then played it against him a lot online. Sounds yeah, because like I was me because I was Neither. trying to get Aegis into Elite Smash also, which is a useless challenge. <laughs> Why Elite Smash, Smash is really Smash. dumb. Fair enough. Um, so obviously, Sora final addition to the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate roster. Uh, most requested character ever. Uh, a fun little fact that I like that has come out in the news was Sakurai said that Fighters Pass 2 was five characters until they actually got the rights to Sora in the end. They were just going to do five, oh, but once they shoot. found once they got the rights to Sora, they were like, fuck it. That's why, you know, in the animation when they showed Fighters Pass 2 for the, the first time, they had the five show up, then the six. That's because they got oh. rights to Sora and they were trying to emphasize that that sixth one was a special one. Um... Could you imagine if they didn't and the past just ended with Kazuya? <laughs> do you want to know what my interesting? Do you want to know what my honest my honest prediction was? It ended with Sephiroth. Been... Oh, yeah, yeah. My guess is it would have ended with Sephiroth, and they didn't want two Square Enix characters back to back in the end, so they swapped Kazuya and Sephiroth's placement. That's probably what yeah, they yeah. did. That makes similar sense. to how they probably swapped Byleth with Steve. In Fighters Pass 1. That's always been my little fan theory is the original Fighters Pass ended with Steve, but because of Fighters Pass 2, they put in Byleth to make everyone feel pain and suffering. It and for me to feel joy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, Kyle, you are number Yo. one Kingdom Hearts fan. Uh, you love all the Kingdom Hearts. All of you, them. You, I love you, every Kingdom Hearts game. None of you, them are bad. Yeah, you love your dream drops, your even, sleepy even by births. Especially Union Cross, Hunter. He, he loves the crossing mm. of the unions. I love it when the union crosses. He loves walking down dark roads. He loves... Um... <laughs> I love Key. He, yeah, he loves memorizing <laughs> melodies. He loves everything, you know? Um... I do love rhythm games. So what are your and thoughts, I Kyle? I remember remembered rhythm game existed. I forgot until I <laughs> remembered Melody and Memory just myself. And I like rhythm games. I still haven't played it. So, Kyle, obviously, you're the biggest Kingdom Hearts fan. Hunters plays them when they come out and goes, yeah. And I... And they I sure do exist. <laughs> and, I, and I only like it because I'm one of the stupid people that thinks the story is hilarious and loves to get way too invested in it because it's so dumb that I have to. Um, so, what are your initial impressions? I think that they did a really good job making Sora faithful to to the actual games aside from his super duper floaty double jump like he's very if you've played kingdom hearts like he's basically just like it feels the same yeah 100 percent. i feel like this is one of the best if not the best example of implementing a character into a game that isn't just a fighting game if that makes sense because <laughs> it was very well translated yeah extremely well translated where it does it, it does genuinely feel right let's get let's talk about the jump let's get the jump out of the way the jump's ass dude it's like it's awful so bad it's yeah. god awful i don't, I don't like know it. why did they think that that was a good idea because like the only thing i can think of is he has the kind of really stupid high jump that you can unlock as a power right where he does like the little twirl in the air and then usually that's when oh, you usually yeah. do your stupid little fly glidey peter pan wank shite that is yeah. garbage in all the games. Peter Pank floaty wank shy. Add that on a t-shirt, guys. There you go. Um, <laughs> Put that on a Valentine. <laughs> that's gonna get us demonetized <laughs> from YouTube if we had demonetization. Um, but yeah, it just doesn't feel good at all. Like yeah. I'm playing Sora and I'm having fun in the air. Like I'm having fun on the ground. Then as soon as I get into the air, it's just garbage. Especially when like, he already has so much recovery. Sucks. Since he's supposed to be more of a... It feels like he's supposed to be more of an aerial character. <laughs> yeah. It's just... It's so weird how they chose to make his double jump because no other game is like... No like Kingdom Hearts game is like that. The only one like, I can thinking, think of like, is Kingdom Hearts 3. Even then, it's not like as exaggerated as they made it in smash bros it's not as floaty i can see why they went as high as they did because it definitely gets the height of the kingdom hearts 3 double jump but kingdom Hearts, if you let sora fall from that jump he falls pretty quickly 
Mm -hmm. It doesn't do the weird floaty kind of Ness-like shite that it does in this um, (laughs) version. But no. And it's it's, it's especially bizarre to me because his recovery is already great as is. He doesn't need it. Yeah. It's like Especially sh- if you know how to do the side special correctly. <laughs> side special's so dumb. Can we talk it's about so that? Dumb. It's so dumb. If they, gave him the, <laughs> they gave him the Pikachu recovery that he can use on top of his up and B. Yeah, it's so uh, it's ludicrous. <laughs> he's a very like, he's very fun. I can't tell. Is what's the smart? <laughs> we usually we'd have Jack on these podcast episodes usually to tell us how good he is. Uh. On a basis of the community, Jack doesn't exist anymore, so we have to go to <laughs> our imaginations. What are, does anyone know? What Smash community is feeling about Sora? Is he overpowered? Is he underpowered? I don't yeah, know. I Every, don't know. They're probably screaming about him because they never seem to be happy. He's it's the last the character, post, so I have it's to the post character release where everyone, every video thumbnail is just Sora's OP. I did, we'll like, find out in like an actual when time passes. <laughs> Yeah, how good he really is. I mean, he let's... feels really good. Like yeah, he's very easy to get a handle on. Yeah, let me have a look. Is Fun Sora like... overpowered? Let's go to Google. Um, no, not in Kingdom Hearts three. I mean, in Smash Bros. <laughs> um, do you well, think? I mean, yes, yeah, Sora's overpowered in every game he's in. Um. He's just so uh, people. People seem mixed on him. I thought. I thought that he's going to be a really annoying character to fight against because I feel like everyone's going to play this goddamn character. And that's my main mm, problem yeah. with Sora. Is I would have to agree. Everyone's going to play him. Because, you know, Bayonetta in Smash 4 was a disaster of how fucking overpowered she was. But <laughs> yeah. at the same time, the only scenario that that's ever going to happen <laughs> is in a competitive environment, or if you're playing with someone who had played Bayonetta, which there's like six people, right? It's not a big <laughs> audience. A hunter, I'm sorry, but it's not a big audience, right? Sora... The worst part is, I didn't even really play Bayonetta that much in Smash 4, so I didn't get to revel in the fact that she was yeah. busted. <laughs> yeah, right? Whereas, I feel like if Sora was busted, it'd be screwed, because everyone and their mum will be picking Sora. I can guarantee that if I went to my friends, right? If I took if I took my Switch to a friend's house and we played Smash, and they don't play Nintendo games that often, and they look at that roster, there's a couple of faces that will stand out, right? Um, and one of the fucking main ones will be right at the bottom, right in the center of the fucking roster, at the bottom <laughs> center. It's Sora's smug-looking ass, and everyone's gonna go, "I know him. He's from Kingdom Hearts," and they're gonna pick him. <laughs> And it's not going to be fun because it's going to be so annoying because he's so floaty. Um, Hunter, what are your thoughts, initial? Anyway. Uh, we've mentioned he's a little floaty for my liking, as we've said, like playing as him. I prefer a bit heavier, kind of like Donkey Kong's one of my favorite people to play <laughs> as. So to give you an idea of how I prefer my characters stand still and just smack. <laughs> Monkey. <laughs> Basically. So he's a little floaty for my liking, but I wasn't hating what i was playing with him i wasn't motivated to play any more than classic mode in 45 minutes but you know yeah i think i know this is an unpopular opinion for a lot of people for me i think it's a good one is i'm glad that the uh, that smash dlc is over because me I play, too i play oh, yeah. not, not not because of the speculation online but it's because i played this dlc and i was like you know, I'm ready for a break of Smash Ult. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for a break because I played this character and I was like, I have no interest in playing this game anymore. Like, legitimately, I love it. I'm happy that I bought the both fights passes and I have the full roster because if there is an odd day where I do feel like playing it with you guys or with some friends, have all the characters. It's great. It's a fun game. I don't think it's a bad game either. Like a load of people think. Like some people think. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm ready to move on. I'm ready for this era of Smash to be over. Because I played him for 40 minutes and I was like, I'm done. Which was the same as I felt with Kazuya as well. And it's the same. Yeah. I felt a bit more with Aegis because I am I like Xenoblade 2 quite a lot. And I think the other characters... And Sephiroth also I was kind of like, eh, and done with 45 minutes. I don't know. I like the wacky characters. That's what I am. I like wacky characters. And near the end, it kind of got a bit... Not generic, but you know, they kind of... 
the wackiness kind of stopped with Steve, if that makes sense. We had a <laughs> we had an era of wacky, you know, where we where we genuinely got we got ban we got a banjo. Uh, obviously, we had Terry, but then we had, you know Byleth, Min Min, Steve, and then it's just like we got wacky, <laughs> wacky, wacky, and then Sephiroth, and then I was like, ugh. <laughs> and I know everyone loves Sephiroth, yeah. but I was just like, ugh. But I don't know. I'm just ready for it to be done, to be honest. And we're back. Uh, we just had a technical <laughs> difficulty, but hopefully that's fixed and we don't have any other issues. I was going to say, I want to talk about the music and the stage for a second. Um, mm. Music is absolute dicks. Dude, it sucks. It's a really <laughs> terrible selection of music. Uh, why is Square Enix's first music selection is always bad? Like, <laughs> it won't even get a second one. Yeah. yeah I know. It's so awful. Like, it's not even like laughably bad it's like there's no new remixes at all i was expecting at least like a battle version of simple and clean not simple and clean uh dearly beloved the i thought they'd <laughs> yeah. do like a jazzy kind of like fight version of that like least. what they did with beneath the mask that would yeah. be dope like i was like you know the jazz version that they did for melody of memory like something kind of upbeat like that where they turned the song into a completely different thing i was expecting something cool like that nothing just shite music not even good kingdom hearts music it was bought like not fight it's all music. kh1 music yeah. too. and it's not fight music it's so garbage i hate it and i'm not a huge fan of the stage either um it should I hate... just have been the last part the whole dive time to the, heart. the dive to the heart would have been perfect would have been amazing it's the hollow bastion shite who likes Hollow? Can someone please find me someone who likes? Why do you like Hollow Bastion from Kingdom Hearts One? Please tell me why you like Hollow Bastion from Kingdom Hearts One. It's just a cool it's, world. It's, it's not like cool, shit. It's a cool it's, castle. I don't know. It's, it's shit. I liked it more than traversing the Disney worlds. You know, going yeah. up and down Tarzan Land like five hundred times. Oh yeah, because going up and down fucking <laughs> shitty elevators is so much better, dude. No, Garbo, awful. <laughs> I can't confirm or deny this. I played Kingdom Hearts once when I was in high school. <laughs> Hollow like, Bastion is basically going up and down. It is going up and down. And it's just it's, it's just so Tarzan, bad. but you're in a castle instead well, of a jungle. It has a castle, so there you go. It stands no. out in my head. <laughs> if it was just the dive into the heart section, it would have. I would have been like, "Oh, that's cool," and it fits Kingdom Hearts a lot. It's the fact that, and I'm not gonna say that it's laziness but to me the, right. the stages that suck the most and feel like the most ca like quick buck stages are the flying maps where you do the panoramics of these stupid fucking levels that were already built in a different engine by somebody else <laughs> where it's yeah. like we we got a lot of those levels throughout <laughs> the fighters pass we like, we got by a lot of them in hero like... hero did that uh, Spiral Mountain, Byleth. I don't count Spiral Mountain. Spiral Mountain. Spiral Mountain, like... yeah. Spiral Spiral Mountain, Mountain is fits. Spiral Mountain. No, it's not like you're. It's not like you're flying around the whole of the Banjo world while you like where gravity makes no sense. I'm not counting like that's fair enough, right? I sure. yeah. Sephiroth did it too. Sephiroth did it. Yeah, I would much rather have e even in its simple form, like Minecraft World, where it is just a minecraft world and it's a bit like but but at least it's not a flying stage as it's flying around a minecraft world at least they made it so it looks like an actual minecraft the stage looks mm -hmm. like it or mementos is just platforms but at least it looks like mementos <laughs> yeah yeah or, or a great example is the xenoblade 2 stage the cloud sea because it's a similar kind of thing where you have titans and stuff in the background, but you're riding on diagetic. a titan. Yeah, and you're <laughs> riding on the back of Gramps, who is a titan, in the cloud sea. So it makes sense. It's not just a random arbitrary platform that's flying around for no reason. I hate them. I feel like this might have been because of... Which is a bummer because like they give you the option for just the final destination and battlefield modes and all of these. I feel like a lot of their stage design eventually leaned into, yeah, we're just going to do battlefield but with different backgrounds <laughs> which is funny to me because they all get banned anyway um, yeah and to be fair i find it funny because everyone's like oh yes <laughs> they wanted to make the kingdom hearts one viable i'm like yes with the square enix music <laughs> that's a great idea because everyone <laughs> knows that that as soon as any music's going to get played from that like the square enix cops are going to go knocking and go is your revenue for me and then takes it away from you because <laughs> that's what's this is my yeah. property that's what square does 
And people are like, oh, they don't content ID Kingdom Hearts songs. I'm sure they will one day because it's Square Enix. It's like, God. Like, I, <clears throat> I love Kingdom Hearts. I really am happy that Sora is in the game, but I know, and then I know that it was a hard character to get. I know they must have worked their asses off getting Disney to accept this, and I'm grateful for what we had. But at the same time, if you got that fucking contract signed to get Sora in, you could have done a little bit harder with the stage and the music. I'm just saying, you could just have the dive into heart be the stage. Don't do the shitty like literally. Yeah, that's just like have one it. of the most. That's like the most Kingdom Hearts iconography that you can have really yeah like, you didn't need the hollow like the bastion graveyard but you know oh, and as for the music i'm fine with them doing just the kingdom Hearts songs and none of the disney shit fine by that <clears> but <throat> give us at least one remix <laughs> and give us at least some interesting stuff that isn't just kingdom hearts one yeah. especially when you put so much effort into other things like i'll give them props probably some of the best alt costumes of a character having all the main line costumes like because we always have you always see people have these conversations where it's like oh you know if dante showed up which outfit would they give it like what would they <laughs> do right whereas they genuinely Not went them. <clears throat> yeah where they actually went with kingdom hearts they were like we know that there are fans of every outfit so let's put them all in there it's not just kingdom hearts one sort you have kingdom hearts two for people like kyle that like black and yellow you have kingdom hearts three for people like me that really like how stupid the plaid looks and have grown to really like that costume a lot i just like belts ethan and I really love the f the plot of the Kingdom Hearts three <laughs> costumes. I don't know what it is about the car key. The Riku car key is so unbelievably dumb, but I really it like is. the outfits of Kingdom Hearts three. I don't know why. I just really like them, all three of them. Um, but man. I used the Valor form costume when I played. Respect. God, that's has got this hipster. Did you always got this hipster in the back? You... No, Hunter just likes red. It's true. He's a simple man. <laughs> Anyway, do you guys have anything but else? But he also doesn't like Dream Drop Distance. Yeah. Did you guys uh notice or did you uh, catch wind of the uh, Easter egg where if he grabs another like item, he'll do the yes the grab? I saw it on Twitter. It. It's very cool. It's the coolest shit. Yeah. Again, I just wish the the music, dude, the music <laughs> and the stage. Literally, I started playing like I played, I played Hollow Bastion like twice and was like, yeah, done. I can, I've heard this music from Kingdom Hearts 1 so much in my life, I don't need to hear it. Usually I go and, like, you know, set the frequency levels of what songs I didn't I'll do it for this get one. on. Yeah, I didn't do it either. <laughs> I was I like, oh, what's all... the point? I do it for all of them, didn't do it for this one, because I was like, what's the point? There's only nine of them, and they're all fucking mediocre. I don't want any of them. <laughs> Whereas even for stages like Minecraft, I was like, oh, no, that's a cool remix. I'll boost that one up a little bit. Like, I don't know. I know I sound like I'm... It's a very nitpicky kind of thing, but I am happy that Sora was the last pick, to be honest. Yeah. Considering how much of a whimper Smash has had with its final characters in the past. I mean, in the past, we've had, like, Jigglypuff in the first game, Roy, or Mr. Game & Watch in Melee, <laughs> Wolf from Brawl, and then Corrin slash Bayonetta, because they basically got revealed at the same time. And I sleep. Well, at least one of them was cool. Yeah. And I sleep. Yeah. And then... And then Byleth to end Fighters Pass 1. Like... Which, on a to be fair... Say what you will, Ethan. It was obviously going to end wasn't with Steve. In it wasn't Incineroar the last one for the base game that was revealed, yeah. too? Yeah. I think so, yeah. To be honest, I like still... It was like Incineroar yeah. Ken, because they got revealed together. Yeah. I still think it would have been funny if it was Isabel at the end. Not because Isabel's a better character, just because that was the that was the direct where people have been waiting for a new Animal Crossing game for like eight years at that point. And then they saw Animal <laughs> Crossing show up and then it was an Isabel fucking in Smash thing. I think that would have been that hilarious been final reveal. Just be like, yeah, fuck you Animal Crossing fans. It's Isabel time. I grabbed the uh, Doom Slayer me costume and that is as pleasing of a visual as I had hoped it would be. <laughs> I love how the fucking Doom Twitter account tweeted finally, and it was just like Isabel and the Me Doom costume together. And I was like, in I the uh, in this in good. the uh, is it the Metroid 
stage with the sun, like the the burn the planet, like the hell kind of like planet inside the core. Yeah. yeah. It was in that stage. I was like, that's that's cute. I still wish they had done that with the costume trailer. I still wish they had done something yeah. with that. But oh well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, any other thoughts? Any wrap up thoughts with Smash? Have, have we said everything? I sure am glad it's over. Yeah, same. Yeah. Please, Nintendo, don't announce another Smash for a while, please. <laughs> it's like, break time. It's break time. Can we? Can we sleep? Can Sakurai sleep? Can the team at Bandai Namco sleep? Can everyone just take a break before we start it again? Because you know what happens next when Smash comes around again, guys. The Great Purge is going to happen, and like that's when yep. the riots start when <clears throat> characters don't Word. come back. I hope it Word. just goes back to the first twelve. No one else. <laughs> I can tell you for, for a fact, Sora isn't coming back, so enjoy Absolutely him while you not. can. <laughs> and we're never getting another fighting game like this ever again. No. Not with again. this roster. No. It's going to take a long time for them to build up something like this again. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't... I feel like when they do... In the... There's two op- if they ever do another Smash, they're ever just going to port this one again and not do anything. Yeah. Or they they're or just gonna it works it worked wonders with Mario Kart. Yeah. Or they're just gonna <laughs> or they're just gonna burn this the fucking thing to a, a crisp and go, We're starting over. Here's Mario and Link. <laughs> Fuck it. Smash Bros is a JRPG now. Deal with it. To be fair, right? I wouldn't I'd be perfectly fine with them doing like a cull of a lot of the first party characters. I'm not saying like mm-hmm. I'm not saying, like, Purge a lot, but I'm saying, like... Maybe tone down the seven different versions of Link. Yeah, like, we don't need three versions of Link. We don't need 17 million Fire Emblem characters. We We don't don't need need 16 million Pokemon. We don't need 15 million Mario characters. Maybe keep the two Xenoblade reps and the two... uh, And, like, keep the Splatoon rep and the two Animal Crossing reps because those games deserve to have one or two reps, right? But squeeze them out a bit keep the third party for the love try your hardest to keep as many third parties as possible that's like that's what i'd say because yeah. it's going to be really depressing if all the third party characters are just gone dude if smash 4 made me sad when only snake was missing yeah <laughs> but that, i don't think they'll lose snake again to be honest konami's that There's desperate no way. yeah konami's yeah. that de- i also think the sega reps are safe to be honest i feel like I feel like they'll keep the. I think they'll keep the say like Sonic will stay for like yeah. forever. It's to be like honest, I feel like yeah. In a different game. <laughs> to be honest, I feel like Joker will stay as well because that's the most Atlas move ever. Is just keep Joker in Smash forever, but never port Persona <laughs> Five to Switch or any Nintendo <laughs> console. I feel like that's the thing to do. Or any Persona game. And then yeah, and then bring a yeah, and then bring a Persona Six or a Shimagami Tensei rep in, and then not have that game have. Have a Shimagami Tensei 6 rep and have that be the first Shimagami Tensei game in a while to not be on a Nintendo platform and move <laughs> somewhere else. Uh, I digress. I've spoken enough until it's time for you to talk about Delta Room because we've been at the Sora game for a while. Back again. This is the episode that's cursed. <laughs> that's two in 30 minutes. So, Hunter, Delta Room, you've been playing it. I sure have. I'm almost done. I'll probably finish it when we're done here. You know, I've just remembered a topic. We might bin some of that shit off, because I've also just remembered that they just announced, uh, Concerned Ape announced his new game, speaking of indie stuff. Um, uh. But anyway, so Deltarune, obviously, it's that Toby Fox game that isn't Undertale, in it. It is. So... And... You haven't played it before, by the way. We should point that out. You didn't play Chapter 1. Did you? I, I I did play chapter one oh, back when okay. it dropped. Fine. So, He's played it. Yeah. <laughs> and that was okay, but I think chapter two is a substantial improvement in just the whole um, vibe that it's got. I really enjoy the uh, villain they have mm-hmm. for this, and I think that's been doing a lot of the legwork for carrying my enjoyment of it, because she is great. I Earlier this week, I think I described her as if Jesse from Team Rocket was believably threatening and also off her meds. Nice. <laughs> I like that. I like that um, so let's take a step back for a second. For people who uh, know of Undertale, but maybe haven't checked out Daltroon, or you maybe don't even know what Daltroon is, do you want to give a brief rundown of what Daltroon is? Because I'm not going to lie, Kyle, I don't know about you. 
it confuses the shit out of me what Deltarune is because I have no clue because they're like, is is it an, is it a sequel to Undertale? Is it a spin-off? Why is Sans and shit in here? But is it a, and it's a separate story? And is it what what the fuck is Deltarune? Okay, I so don't know anything about it either? I don't have all the answers here just because like I don't think anyone but Toby Fox himself possibly does but from my own observations it seems almost like a kind of final fantasy-esque scenario where he's using familiar characters and stuff to tell a new story in a similar setting but it doesn't seem to be connected like hard yeah to undertale yet which you know there's still like five more chapters to go so i can't wait for chapter six it's gonna be yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be some it's gonna be some xenoblade 2 shit dude where it's like (laughs) it's not connected it's not connected and then they pull the uno reversal card like fucking (laughs) five hours until the end and they're like yeah what what if what if it was purple (laughs) but (laughs) yeah and keeping it disconnected you know on the surface at least for now is been working fine for me i think it's been it, uh, this new chapter has introduced more things that I've enjoyed probably by the time that it gets to the end. Mm-hmm. Like if it got to the end of this uh, and didn't connect the undertale, I think it'll still be a more complete experience than undertale mm-hmm. by the end. So <clears throat> I guess what's the difference between this and undertale then in regards to the gameplay and such? It plays pretty similarly as far as like, it's still turn-based. You're still like dodging things on the uh enemy's turn and all that the uh the meta narrative with the whole sparing thing is a little de-emphasized it still says hey you should spare them instead because killing people is mean but also (laughs) now that you know chapter two like i played chapter one on my computer and i'm playing chapter two on the switch it's kind of hard for them to track my uh consequences there Mm. so do uh, they not ask you um did well, I could do, go like, and play the did, first chapter or whatever. I, I was but... just like wondering, do they pinky promise you if you start from chapter two? They're like, oh, did you did you kill anyone? Tell me. No, I they swear. didn't ask me. <laughs> pinky promise. That. Don't lie. No, they didn't do anything like that. But chapter two did introduce this uh, new mechanic with the sparing, where if you spare a, a certain number of the same monster, it recruits them, which sends them back to your like, castle town home base or whatever no oh, nice which was a cool way to you know make it to where oh keep doing this instead of just straight killing them even though it can't track your consequences the only thing that's i'm realizing is a little weird about it is I've only been in that place at the very beginning of the game i imagine i'll be going back yeah at probably the end, in chapter three but, or... um it's just a bit strange that it's not like an area that I've went back to several times now. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. So what is the story of Daltaru? Uh Or premise, Chris, should I say. Chris and this rambunctious other student at his school, Susie, go into a closet and are whisked away into a, another world. Okay. And that's where the adventure happens. All right. And yeah, and then Delta Rune Chapter Two is it. Chapter Two takes place like the very next day, and that tripped me out for a minute because it's been like two years real time. <laughs> and I was like, huh, okay. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I I feel like I am gonna play Delta Rune Chapter One too. There's been a whole. You know, I have had this deal where I wanted after to you just talking wait, but... about what you liked about Undertale last week. I think that you'll probably enjoy this more. Mm, really. Yeah, because, you know, half of our problem with Undertale is that we don't care so much for the meta narrative. Oh, you know, killing people is bad, (laughs) etc. Well, it's not that. I just, yeah, I don't like how in its own (laughs) fucking, yeah, up its own arse it is at times. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a little, that's more de-emphasized in this. And I think it lets the character writing and all of that speak for itself more. Yeah. Fair enough. I I I'm planning on playing it. I might play it before uh, I feel, I start Scarlet Nexus. It's still up on my TV. Yeah, I have bought. I finally got around to getting that. I haven't played it, so we're not going to talk about it. Um, but I might because I am interested. And like I say, I think I've gone 
past the point of waiting for it all to be released because I know that the next time yeah, this comes it around, it's not going to be, be finished like yeah. that anymore. So I might just jump in and screw because I assume Toby's making it with the intent of these being playable from when they release. I assume it's like a Life of Strange thing where he's he's now made it knowing that he's releasing Chapter Two by itself. So it will yeah. at least wrap up some sort of threads and will leave stuff dangling for the rest of it. So no. Yeah, that's what it seems to be going for now. So. Um. Yeah, I'm interested in it. Do you have anything, Kyle? I know you're not an uh, Undertale person. I guess. Like my only question is, what would, what um, how how would somebody who, ha- has like no connection with Undertale, like, what would this game kind of do for them? slash would it even like appeal to them i think it would still be pretty possible to play like just start at delta rune like obviously start with chapter one don't just yeah. jump into chapter two that'd be a bit chaos <laughs> i mean i wouldn't i wouldn't judge you but if you really wanted to but if i think if you start at delta rune just at the beginning of it you could still really enjoy like because you don't need to know what happened in undertale to get the story of this one you'll understand like some of the winks and nudges that they you know do with the camera but that's about it yeah Um, i know there's a running joke about papyrus in delta room because i saw it in the steam description where it was like meet familiar faces like sans and toriel not papyrus though papyrus isn't in the game He's, and, <laughs> in the, yeah the epilogue of the first game he's only referenced and you don't get to see him yeah then they keep doing it like apparently I've, i keep seeing people be like they keep teasing him because like sans is like because like there's a there's a moment i don't know if this is in chapter two or chapter one where sans is, like you, you sans like i don't know your character asks about if sans has a brother or whatever and sans <laughs> is like a brother and then in like really bold text in like a really slow way, he just says, I don't have a brother with like really eerie music. <laughs> and then he's just like, just kidding, I do. He's just not around right now. And I'm like, that's so like, oh, I don't know fine. what it is about Papyrus, but that Toby's hinting at something weird with Papyrus. So, and Papyrus is already a weird per- like weird character. So I can't wait to see what inevitably happens with him. So yeah, if you don't necessarily have the story of Undertale, you like the reason someone would like Undertale are still present in Delta Rune, but you don't necessarily need to have experienced it first. Okay. If anything, I think it might be a ben- like a more of a benefit to you because I know that the reason that you never wanted to even really touched Undertale is because of all of the the hype and the the clout and the Twitter screaming of Undertale, right? I know. Um, that I that's... think my thing with Undertale is that I've just being a passive observer, I feel like I had everything spoiled for me inadvertently uh, yeah so right i mean there's maybe delta is a good idea because they've been better with hiding the delta rune spoilers um mm. they haven't spoiled me yet so yeah. it's probably and i am on twitter a lot for gaming stuff so of course i get spoiled on a lot of things so yeah maybe it's a good start maybe we should play Kyle. maybe um one Your thing gaming date maybe. delta rune book club <laughs> Delta Rune Book Club. <laughs> yeah, um, we'll get to that right after we get to the Metal Gear Solid yeah, Book exactly, Club. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, one game one I day. wanted to talk about, if we're talking in this little indie segment, uh, was Concerned Ape Stardew Valley Dev just yesterday announced his new game, which was interesting. I don't know if you two saw it. I uh, saw your tweet about yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so it's called, and I like when I saw the title of this, I was like, okay, it's called Haunted That's- Chocolatier is the i i saw the title and it made me smirk i'm like i don't know what that means but yeah and so (laughs) it's a new game by concerned ape it's in the same universe as stardew valley and from what we can tell you play a character who has moved to this big city and has taken over this haunted chocolate factory where you a bit like deltarune you go into a room and you end up in another world filled with monsters and you collect and kill like kill the monsters collect the ingredients and make chocolate to sell to the people like the the people in the town um very cool so it still has your stardew valley social aspect from the sound of it from the city instead of being in the town which i think is funny because the whole story and ethos of stardew valley is basically talking about 
how you meeting people in a small town and like growing a community and moving away from the big city and this one is moving to the big city from a small town and living in a haunted <laughs> chocolate like factory Persona four and five switcheroo <laughs> yeah genuinely <laughs> So I just wanted to mention it because it's very early in development and as Concerned Ape has said, it's nowhere fucking near coming out. Um, I mean... But I just love the concept because it's mm, it sounds sound so like similar, fun. but it's so unique where I'm like, yeah, I'm in. I'm in from day one. Like, Star- Stardew Valley is such an excellent video game. And... Oh, you know, indie Willy Wonka game? That sounds like fun. <laughs> I just love the idea of going into another world and killing monsters and getting ingredients, then coming back to your haunted chocolate factory and fucking making the chocolate and selling it to people. It's just... There's a the Halloween like events in Dragon Fable do things like that, where you go to like the spooky witch land and like the candy is haunted and evil, like monster candies. Yeah. <laughs> but when you defeat them, they turn into regular candy. <laughs> I'm just going to quickly check that I haven't missed anything. But yeah, because like I saw the trailer and I was like, this looks close to being done. And then uh, Eric Baroni, who is concerned ape, was like, yeah, I work in a vertical slice kind of development cycle, whereas I like to make it so that uh, like I like to polish a a chunk of it so I know what the game is and then build outwards from there. So yeah, he was like, this sense. is still very early. I've just polished this very specific part. Um, but yeah, he is uh, finally moving on from Stardew Valley after 10 years, and it's called Concerned Ape's Haunted Chocolatier. So, yeah. And he goes on with a load of other metaphors, being like, if Stardew Valley represented the sun, then this is the moon. It's kind of the darker, kind of weirder yeah. kind of brother of Stardew Valley. I um, do like the moon. Yeah. But I'm sure. I'm sure it's going to be great. <laughs> Don't look at me like that, Kyle. I'm. I'm sure it's going to be great, and I'm I can't look at anything, Hunter. Uh, is that, is that, is that. Uh, next. Topic. I too enjoy the moon and not being able to take pictures of it. <laughs> That's my least favorite thing about the moon is that no Genuine. camera can capture it. <laughs> right. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Let's talk about Animal Crossing and this darn expansion pass debacle. Can we just keep talking about the moon instead? What, I'm to chocolate <laughs> The moon factories? is free. No. <laughs> the moon is free. So is some of the Animal Crossing stuff. Yeah. Which, <clears throat> can I say, before the expansion pass shat on the Nintendo Parade, it was a really damn good update for Animal Crossing that they are adding. I will give them that. Uh, I'm going to buy the Happy Home Paradise. I'm not buying the expansion pass. I'll just buy the Animal Crossing DLC flat out. I'm not I'm not subjugating myself to N64 games for $50 a year. I'm good. Um, But yeah, so Animal Crossing. Like, there's so much... Like, did they hoard the content? Because people were joking oh, about how Animal Crossing was like the most un, like worst updated game ever. And then they're just like, yeah, here's all the shit that should have been in the game on day one. Bye. Yeah. Like, for those of you who didn't see what they added, it was a shit ton. But obviously Brewster, they added Tortimer. No, they, sorry, they added Brewster. They added a way for you to get the, the, the daily shopkeepers to be in a permanent fucking place. Hallelujah. I've seen Red twice in my life and I've played this game for <laughs> over a year. Uh, so that's a feature. They added um, Cap'n with his random little boat. Uh to sail away to random islands. They added a shit ton of furniture, a shit ton of storage options, a shit ton of There was of stuff. a chair that looks like a frog. Froggy chair's back, baby! Oh, it is back? Froggy chair's back! <laughs> Wait, this is like something that is... Ha- people. I thought people just liked the way it looked. No, I didn't right, so, it was oh, something previously you, oh, attached. <laughs> you don't know the froggy chair debacle of 2020. Dude. Let me tell you. Um, froggy chair was a chair in Animal Crossing New Leaf that looked like a frog. That people were like pretty yeah. like that's pretty okay. pog and then it's pretty frog and then yeah when the announcement trailer came out someone was like there's no froggy chair so a twitter account was created <laughs> called like days without froggy chair in animal crossing new horizon <laughs> and they just kept analyzing each trailer and then when it, the game came out and there was no froggy chair there was uproar in the community how dare they not add froggy chair but he's finally <laughs> made it um he's finally here yeah 
And then I think he the co- yeah. The boy. So basically, they added a little shit ton of free content, which was already enough. And then on top of that, they went, <laughs> "Oh, here's the expansion pass for like like here's the expansion, not the pat. We'll fucking get to that. The expansion for Animal Crossing, which is basically if you haven't if you didn't know, there was a game on the 3DS called Happy Home Designer, which was a game where you could create villagers' homes and do it. It was like a, it was creative mode. If anim- regular Animal Crossing is survival mode of Minecraft, then <laughs> Happy Home Designer is the creative mode. And I always used to be like, why didn't they just have this in the main fucking game? Why is this a spin-off? And now here it is as an expansion, and it's really cool. And I'm very happy that it's just in the game. Um, Yeah, that's cool. So, expansion pack. Hunter, you talk about the expansion pack. I don't give a toss. Oh, right. <laughs> so, after that, they dropped, uh, in the same direct, they dropped the news that the expansion pack pricing for you know the second tier of nintendo's online service is going to be 50 dollars a year <clears throat> over double the price that they're asking of you currently uh yeah it's fucking shit in it it's yeah. a joke especially when like people are comparing it people are like oh you only get three games a month on playstation plus and they charge 60 i'm like yeah they're newish games yeah. and also sony servers aren't wank yeah, yeah that's you the get problem. good online that's the problem that you know having the comparable it's only ten dollars cheaper than xbox and sony is now and so people are going to want functional online services with this Bitch, it's like it's not even comparable, right? Even if we take Xbox's highest subscription, which is uh, Xbox Live plus Game Pass, that's one hundred and twenty dollars a year. It's yeah. double the over double the price, yet it's still better value because you get Game Pass for a year and their servers and the free games with gold. And it's like Nintendo, what are you getting? You get in like Genesis yeah. games, old who, games you've already played. Yeah. And that'd be fair enough if there was a no. There's you're literally paying for like fucking fourteen and sixty four games in year yeah. one. Like I won't. Yeah. I, if I ever do upgrade to this, it'll be a year or two from now at the earliest. Like if I'm feeling a specific itch to play in sixty four games, and you'll probably buy it for a month. Well, you just yeah, buy, apply it to play year, the N64 because, game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll play the N64 games. I'll be like, cool. You unlocked everything in Mario Golf again. <laughs> Played Majora's Mask again. Hooray. And I mean, attaching the Animal Crossing expansion pack to it is also a bit bollocks, to be honest. Because it's like... Because mm. some people will be like, oh, that's I was going to buy it anyway, so I'll just buy the expansion. No, because you don't get to keep the expansion for Animal Crossing <clears throat> once it's over. It just locks yeah. you out of it once you run out. It it's so dumb. It off. Now... Obviously, it's like Pokemon yeah. Bank. It is like Pokemon Bank. If this is a thing that the they're going to start home, doing, sorry. yeah. If this is going to be a thing that they're going to start doing, where they're going to include the ins- the expansions to their games in the expansion pack, then that might be a different bad. story when there's more of them. If you like, if you end up like getting, say, the Splatoon three expansion and whatever else, if Xenoblade three has an expansion, you get that in it. If it starts getting to the point where you get nintendo's dlc by paying for the expansion pack it's not gonna fucking happen though because it's nintendo no yeah it's gonna be this is gonna be the only example of, it's so dumb genesis games you can get there on every fucking system say you can hands them out on like <laughs> compilation cds like it's no tomorrow yeah like <clears throat> who's paying for oh. this i genuinely want to know i want to find it <laughs> Some people will, and they'll probably still complain about it, but they'll do it, which is the silly part. Yeah, like, I'm not buying it. When you they said that it. there was going to be a price increase, I was kind of like, okay, fine. I was expecting <laughs> definitely not double, <laughs> over yeah. double the price. I was, I was, like, expecting, okay. I was expecting 30 like, or 40. Yeah, like 30 or 40, and I would be like, okay, sure, here you go. <laughs> not 50. 50. Mm-hmm. That's like ridiculous. I w- I'm not paying. I can't that. believe some of the apologists out there too. Like, oh, just get a dozen friends together and it'll cost you all less than a cup of coffee for a year. I'm yeah. like, or it's screw like, you, man. Yeah, or it's I like... don't buy coffee every morning anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so this is still a bad metaphor. I hate to say it. The Your cup of coffee. The cup of coffee. Oh, <laughs> Kyle's gone. The 
The cup of coffee argument is such a San Francisco argument because the yeah. only place in the world that pe- where people buy coffees from Starbucks every single fucking day, like everyone does it, it's the norm, is San Francisco. Like every yeah, time. It's a very coastal privileged thing there. It's like, yeah, it's like I don't buy coffee every day. It's like, and even if I did, it's like people are like, it's less than $5 a month. I'm like, so is a lot of things. I don't need it. Like, I don't need to give it like... So, so is my Spotify subscription. Yeah. And at least with Spotify, I get a fucking... Like, I get this library of music, new and old, not just old games and shitty online. <laughs> yeah, like... Like, $20 a year for Nintendo's mediocre online service. It's still a and fucking like, rip-off, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. It's still a rip-off. If you play the NES and SNES games, fair enough, right? There we go, third time. <laughs> Stop and start this podcast. If we had sponsors, this is where we put them in, but uh, yeah, sad times. I uh, think I was in the middle of saying $20 a year for their mediocre online <laughs> service. I was like, okay. You know, like Tetris 99 is what finally got me into that <laughs> a year after or over two years of owning a Switch. And I was like, okay, cool. You know what? $20 to play Tetris when I want to, plus, you know, online functionality for other things. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. It's just the fact that they give you fuck all. Like, they act as if, like, here's these SNES and uh, like NES and SNES games that you've played 6 million times before and that we know that 90% of the people that are wanting to play these probably have the ROMs on their PC or have another way to play them because they've already bought them. SNES Classic. Or a SNES Classic or an NES <laughs> Classic or anything. And it's just so dumb. It's Sorry, like modded SNES Classic so I could put anything on there. Yeah. But the first like... thing I did was put Chrono Trigger on there. Nice. <laughs> Fixed your fucking product, Nintendo. <laughs> but no, it's just... Uh, I don't know. I'm not buying it. Like I say, even no. though the expansion pack is the exact same price as the New Horizons expansion, the Happy Home Paradise thing, I'm just buying Happy Home Paradise straight up. I'd rather own the At fucking DLC. At least you DLC. can own it forever. Yeah. Or yeah. to like turn it off. Like, well, for as long as Nintendo console. servers are online, which no Nintendo, as soon as they turn off the uh, the uh, the twelve month the, the the expansion pack membership, they'll be like, yeah, the Animal Crossing DLC is going off the servers as well at the same time, so that the people that paid full price for it can also yeah. fuck off. Bye. Like, what hap- What happens in the long run when the servers are down? <laughs> no clue. <laughs> well, if you bought it and you downloaded it, I assume that's it. But yeah, if they can't verify you your... No, method- one funny scenario sure. about Nintendo and their mediocre online thing. It'll be really funny when the multiplayer N64 games online has better online than their uh, current games. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna need to, to justify that price. Fuck me. If they- like, you know... If they ever have Mario Party 2, I might give them one month just so that we can play Mario <laughs> Party 2. But that's about it. Not... Smash 64, better online oh than God. Smash Ultimate. Can you imagine? Yeah, roll, back. <laughs> roll that back, dude. Let's go. But yeah, what a shit show. God, isn't it fun to like Nintendo? I'm telling you guys, just start hating on them. It's like way more fun. It really is. They're never going to they're ne- they're give us review code or anything anyway, so it's fine. We'll just keep shitting on them. It's fine. We're good. Yeah. I made I'll praise sure Dread and I didn't even get a review code. <laughs> I'll praise Nintendo when they deserve to be praised, which might be next year. We'll see. <laughs> it depends on if Breath of the Wild comes out. Even then, I'm, I feel like I'm just going to be like, yeah, I like the first one more. <laughs> At that point, I think we're just praising Monolith Soft instead. True. Oh, yeah. If Xenoblade 3 is out next year, <clears throat> we'll see. Maybe. Nintendo doesn't like announcing games six months beforehand, so we won't know until like June if that game's next year. Anyway. Well, last time they did it, it's with Advanced Wars, it got delayed. Yeah, which is why they don't like doing it. Um, Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Anyway. Um, what time? You know what? I'm going to skip the off from that as a Suicide Squad. Because we talked about Shocker Tears. Let's just go to the Silent Protagonist. Let's just go to the Silent Protagonist. Yeah, because Discord Before Discord explodes again. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's go with Silent Protagonist. So finally, let's wrap it up with a discussion. Do you want to... Talk about where this came from, Hunter. Uh, Originally, I was having this conversation with other people in the week because of Kotaku's mediocre (laughs) Metroid Dread foot and mouth. 
uh, hoopla that they've been continuing with. Uh, this week it was Samus doesn't need to be an emotionless robot to be cool or something along those lines. And I was like, bad take. Samus is super expressive in Metroid Dread. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, dude, she's fun. got three whole lines. Yeah. I do, that's not the point. She's really well animated <laughs> I, I, and it comes across I <laughs> super know, I well. Know. Right. I've I've always been of the right. Like I've like with Samus, my thing with Samus is like I don't see Samus as a, a silent protagonist. I just see her as she just isn't talking because she's most 90% of the time she's on a fucking own. Like yeah, yeah. Samus doesn't need to Exactly. Talk. There's no one to talk to. <laughs> yeah. Like like people will sh- like I've seen like reactions because I've I i have tried to avoid Metroid Dread spoilers, but obviously the fact that she talks in Metroid Dread ca- came up, so I saw it, and I saw people like shot. She, like, she talks. I'm like, of course she fucking talks. It's just she doesn't have anyone Someone's to ever talk to. to her. Yeah, like she, she she gives you the opening narrate. She gives you the opening like prologue every time. Yeah, yeah. and I hope like I don't see that what's wrong with that, and I just I just find it hilarious. Because the same people that are bitching about Samus being uh, a silent, quote unquote, silent protagonist are also the people that think it's great and helps immerse themselves in the Elder Scrolls and in Fallout yeah. and in any other game and shit like that. Like, I don't like shitting on uh, journalists or like, pub- like publications, really. Because it's not my place. Because I'm not really a journal- I'm not a journalist or anything like that. But there's something about the articles that Kotaku has been pushing out these past couple of months, where I'm just looking at. Them. They have a specific axe to grind with Metroid. And like, that it. They've it. been extra stupid. They've been extra stupid, right? And I know a lot of people don't like Kotaku for various reasons. And I'm not t- I'm not justifying hating on them for other stuff or other reasons like politics or anything like that. Like whatever you do, you on that regard. I'm solely talking about these stupid articles they keep making, which is 100 percent just clickbait articles to piss people off. And it's it's really starting to get the to me dude now. The dude who wrote it said that Samus should smile more. Oh fuck God. me, dude. fuck. Me. First of all, he's a dude, and that's the most patronizing thing you could ah, say to yeah. someone. Yeah. And also, you know, a perfect ah. illustration of Samus having personality in that game. That's the kind of thing that would get him punched in the mouth. I'm just uh... She wears a helmet the entire game. Yeah, you can't you even see her face. To tell. All of the expression is in the eyes. Smile more, bitch. Got him. Um it's interesting. Uh, question to you guys. Obviously, she spoke a little bit in Dread. Do you think this yeah. is a hint at what's to come? Do you think she's going to be speaking quite a bit in 4? Or whatever yeah, it's Metroid called? Prime yeah. 4. Um, I, I don't imagine she'll be talking that much if she does yeah. talk at all. I imagine. I think, she, like, I think she'll be talking in it. Not huge, but... Yeah, like I could see... like. R- See, I think Prime actually had other like hunters that she interacted with yeah. here and there, so mm-hmm. I could see her saying something mm-hmm. to them because you know the situation actually calls for her to say something. Yeah. yeah, I think there'll be dialogue in Prime. I think I don't know when. I'm hoping we see Metro Prime next year, not as in the game release. I hope we see that it exists again. Anything? Yeah, yeah. But I think it's going to be more of a. I think if two D, I think two D Metroid will be more of the gameplay oriented. Three D Metroid will be more of the story oriented. Is what I think personally. Is what they're going to do. With that, it. Yeah, that could be something they try there. I mean, as long as they do it well, like you know, people throw other M and trying to, you know, characterize Sam as more. It it is just a concept that you shouldn't do, and I'm like, nah. If you do it right, it was the then execution, it won't not the idea. Yeah, yeah. I think get, giving Samus more um, development stuff like that is a great idea. It's just the execution was really poor in that attempt. That was all. Yeah. Um. But yeah, this led to a discussion on silent protagonists in in general. I saw Reset Era, which if you do yourself a favor, if you are into gaming stuff, stay away from Reset Era. Just gonna say that because it's useful. Because if you have any gaming news, 
someone will post about it instantly, right? Great place to get game news. But then also, it is also like the hot zone for the shittest takes on the planet. Like, genuinely. <laughs> if you want to find the worst takes, go to Reset Era at times, because fuck me. Dude. Like, genuinely. I saw uh, them to... So, regarding the Kotaku article, are silent protag... Do si- silent protagonists... Uh, uh, are they a detriment to the story? Do they make the story worse? And I saw people that were like, oh yeah. The fact that in Persona 4 that they don't say the lines or the fact that in any JRPG a lot of silent protagonists don't say the lines is a detriment to the story and I'm just sitting there headbutting. Dude. Like, I'm literally set, like, I'm All like, right. yeah, this is dumb. <laughs> Calling out Persona, like, Persona 5 specifically, because I feel like I do get a really good sense of jo- who Joker is through of the way he's animated and all of that, is really dumb. You don't need people to say things to come across as an actual character. Yeah. There's more to it than just words. And even then, have people just forgotten what the RP stands for in RPG role-playing yeah. He's meant to be an insert character for the player. Yeah, which I, because yeah, when I read when you read the when you read the dialogue and you say it when you press X, it's as if you've just said it because you've just made that choice because you've read it. Is how I've always envisioned it. So in my head, Joker isn't a silent protagonist. Whenever I click that option, he's saying that it's just not voiced. Because yeah. have you how many times have you need to be. how many times have you had a game and I fucking hate these games where they give you dialogue options right when it happens right. all the time in a Telltale game where they'll give you two mm-hmm. fucking dialogue options and you press one of them and they either say the exact same thing that you've just fucking chosen so you've already read that and they're saying it again and you're like wait we're just fucking repeating ourselves here or you click something and then the the narration the voiceover is a completely different line I fucking hate that. Dragon Age <laughs> oh. uh, Two and Inquisition do do that here and there, where you'll it'll be like oh some very like just short sentence, and then it'll be like oh actually all of this, and I'm like oh, I didn't quite mean all of that. Oh yeah, a hundred percent. Like the, <laughs> like the prompt will be sorry for your for your loss, right? And you'll click it, and then your character will be like. Sorry for your loss, you piece of shit. And I'm like, no, I didn't want the hostility. What the fuck? I did it wasn't there. You know? I think Pro Z D had a skit like that. It was like the dialogue is more aggressive than you thought it was gonna be. Yeah. It ha- like I just it's such a stupid argument. I hate it so much. It's, yeah. Like I'm i I'm completely fine with voices and games. I also there are certain games where I do prefer to have voices in them but like rpgs i'm like either or like to me i like both if you're gonna have dialogue options a lot of the time that's fine but also there's also on a load of side quests in most jrpgs they just don't have the side quest voice because there's too many of them it's like yeah bits and pieces like the last time i think i had an axe to grind with a silent character in a game was when i played astral chain because it made no sense because yeah. the other one first was... of all yeah, be- yeah, because the other whoever you didn't pick had a personality, and also like stylish action games like that are kind of predicated on having a charismatic protagonist to have fun, watch, do cool things, and or at least an interesting a, protagonist. And your character is just a uh, brick. Yeah, not a very customizable brick. There's not really much <laughs> for you to fill in, like you can with change your own the hair color. Yeah, you can change their the color of their hair, but like you don't have very many clothing it. options, mm. and stuff like that. You were re- really limited in that game. It's like they wanted to do more with that, but just didn't commit. That sounds like a platinum idea, to be honest. That's a lot of platinum games. Like yeah. I poor like, Astral Chain. I like <laughs> Bayonetta and Bayonetta Two, but a lot of the other platinum games that I have seen and near, but it's like. Seems like a lot of we're we're seventy five percent of the way there. Let's take that extra twenty five percent now, and they're like, no, we're stopping here at seventy five. Release the game. <laughs> we yeah. we don't have the money to finish it. Release the game, and you're like, no, you just no, just, just the twenty five percent. Come on, you can do it. No, we're not going to. Goodbye. It's like you're so close, you're so close. Um, but no, it's so dumb. <laughs> I hate Twitter. I hate. 
I, I hate i hate i hate gamers trademark i do trademark. hate gamers tm dude i do honestly like, they're the worst sometimes like dude red and transistor is like canonically mute there's a reason for it i could totally see someone totally missing that and saying that she's a bad character because she doesn't talk mm-hmm. even though she's one of the most expressive silent protagonists i've ever seen yeah and and a lot of the music in the game comes from her point of view. There's more than just one way to do it. Exactly. This magical thing called show and don't tell. It's like the yeah, first man. thing you learn in film school. <clears throat> no, is tell. how to use body language. Just tell everybody. Also, I tried looking for the thread. I cannot find it in my history, so I must have checked it on my phone, which is sad. I was going to try and find it. Oh, well. But no. I just... Uh, I don't see why people complain. Like, what's the point? I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Like, I get why the Kotaku fuck it. I get why Timmy from Kotaku wrote it. Because he was told, Hey, Timmy, it's your friend Billy Bob here from Kotaku. I need you to cause some controversy so Kotaku could get some clicks again. Because we lost Jason Schreier and we lost Tim Rogers. And they were the people that made our content. And we don't have them anymore. And we need some fucking (laughs) content. The other thing is like a bad silent protagonist. Like I just complained about Astral Shame. But I would take that over a bad character with a voice. Oh, 100%. Any day of the week. I would take the party from Final Fantasy 1 over Noctis and his merry band of (laughs) fool bags any day of the week. Yeah, dude. Dude, the party in FF1 is customizable. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do like, so there's some <sighs> dialogue, like, there is, there's some too bad it's good cringe dialogue that I do love, though. Like. Well, yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's just, like, on a level of. Mediocrity. Especially in an RPG, yeah. if someone sucks and you're with them for all that time you hate them i hate sora so much because he sucks <laughs> i think kingdom hearts is the like one of the purest examples of an rpg where the performance is peaked in the first fucking game like they just went down like sora when you play kingdom hearts 3 you feel like 35 year old Haley joel osmond just like fucking <laughs> he's going, so tired dude you're like i'm so sick of talking about friendship and darkness and light get me <laughs> yeah. out all of that I could do without. I could do without Donald and Goofy talking about ingredients and hidden emblems all the time. If everyone if I, in that game was mute, if I have to, better. if I have to hear them say Sora, Donald, and Goofy with that spacing and that order in that list one more fucking time, I'm gonna lose it. <laughs> Sorry, that's just one of my... That's why my biggest Kingdom Hearts nitpick is how every time someone speaks to those three, they have to say him in the exact same order of Sora, then Donald, then Goofy, and have it... It's always in the subtitles as a list, and there's always a space between each one of them as the camera pans to each fucker, because they do it every damn time. You know what I'm talking about. You know the scene. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> Sora, it, it, Donald, it, it, and Goofy. Like, you're sitting there and frozen, and you're like, why? why? Who speaks like this? You just say thanks, you guys. I wonder if anyone's made a compilation of all of those. Please don't. That's my nightmare. We should do that. I'm not doing it. Fuck off. You can do that. I'm not doing that. That's my nightmare. (laughs) Compilation of that? No. I'd like to see how much time Namora's wasted with that. That'd be funny. Yeah. But no. Let us know what you guys think about silent protagonists. Do you like them? Do you hate them? Uh... Why was that Kot- Kotaku article so fucking dumb? Right, let us know. Honestly, yeah. Article? Oh, which one? Article. Uh, which yes. One? <laughs> all, all of the above. Um, the one that said pirating Metroid Dread was A-OK? Oh, God, that one. That one, too. Jeez. Yeah, dude. Uh, I saw, like, th- th- I saw someone, that, there was another stupid take that I saw where people were like, that Kotaku article was fine. And I'm like, is it though? There were there were some it came, people came out two days ago. There were some people who were like, "Stop defending the corporation that isn't your friend." And I'm like, "That's not the point. Stop Things... defending Kotaku, who's not your friend." <laughs> Things cost money. Either get over it or stop playing. 
<laughs> yeah, it's we this all is literally the world we live in. We keep mentioning it, but there is the gamers that are just like our <laughs> game, and they just take it <laughs> like our like literally like the amount of people I see on oh, Twitter. Here, while, we're like, while we're bringing up dumb internet trends, this was one I was gonna do last week, but forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Nintendo sixty dollars versus PlayStation sixty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> see it's not that hard to take two games that are substantially gapped in quality and just frame it differently i too love nitpicking it's also way easier though to do that with nintendo with the amount of shovelware they do shovel out though every year like well yeah but like i was seeing this with metroid dread was the axe that people were grinding here and they were like throwing god of war there i'm like breath of the wild and horizon came out back to back and everyone liked breath of the wild more <laughs> oh, but hunter and god of war you can't even cut down a tree oh did you see that oh my Fuck god me, <laughs> so stupid oh. go outside <laughs> if you care so much <laughs> please go touch grass he, he did he did go outside and he noticed that when you swung an axe at a tree that they chopped down and then when he went back in to play god of war he was like it ain't working ragnarok better let me chop the fucking tree down working it ain't working i've sat here for 26 years it's not breaking i fucking honestly get Twitter alive a dude. get a fucking live like the amount of nitpickers i see on the <laughs> internet i oh, trying to know another one can we talk about the persona one that happened this week where the oh, giveaway geez. said persona 5 royal for pc and switch instead of strikers there was a giveaway that Atlas was doing, and yeah. by accident, they typoed Royal instead of Strikers. The website even had a photo of the Strikers cover on it, and then all the internet slews with their 500 IQ was like, Royal's coming to PC and Switch, baby. And Atlas is literally goes, sorry, guys, typo. And then all the PR people are like, sorry, typo. And they're all like, you can't fool us. It's confirmed. It better <laughs> come soon or we're going to write. And I'm just sitting here going, I hate they're the They're like the... This is different because the Switch Pro will probably actually eventually happen, but it's like the same kind of mentality. It was like, if we just say it enough, it'll happen the next time we want it to. Oh, they're going to keep <laughs> saying it. They're going to keep saying oh, it. Oh, my God. It's going to get to March and they're going to start again. Like, they are literally going to start ramping it back up. <laughs> Ethan, only only you're gonna get this, and I'm okay with it. It's like Shrek the Musical. I know it's today. <laughs> yeah, that's literally how it is. It's just everyone just wakes up and goes, "Oh, it's Switch OLED time." And then they get gets to eleven fifty nine, and they're like, oh, "Okay, tomorrow's Switch OLED time." Like that's the uh... the Switch Pro time. <laughs> <laughs> the Swoled. Like, let's go, gamers. Like, oh fuck me. Like, Twitter's bad. Don't go to Twitter. Just don't. don't go to Twitter. When I promote our Twitter later, just don't. Just stay away. <laughs> just follow I cat accounts or something. Again. <laughs> no, great. If if I could delete my Twitter account, I We're would. We're like in the outro though. Is there even a point for me? Uh, no. Hunter Hunter can just guess the rest because I'll do the outro now. It's fine. <laughs> As always. Oh, this is gonna be fun. All links are on screen right now. You can go uh, and follow us. I came back. <laughs> oh, I can back. hear you again. Oh my Darn god! It. It's a miracle. We were gonna try and do the whole uh, outro oh. with you just be just guessing from my hand movements where we were. Uh, but yeah, you oh, can go yeah. follow us on our private social media if you don't, if you want to keep up to date with what we do outside of uh, Heart Games Only. Go follow us there. But if you only want to uh, keep up to date with the podcast and do what we said to not do two seconds ago you can go and follow us on twitter at hot gamers only don't do it come and subscribe to the youtube channel youtube.com forward slash hot gamers only or search for hot gamers only on your favorite podcast service or look at the link tree where you because you can find us on every podcast service including uh spotify and apple podcasts uh, yeah if you could head to youtube.com forward slash hot gamers only and hit us with a sub we'd really appreciate it get us to 125 subs before christmas so that we feel like we've made a substantial mark this year if you just wait till december you could just do one every day 25 days no don't literally <laughs> start well, now because no, we're at 110 right now yeah start right. now i want subs okay what's for dinner to be, yeah, to, be, want subs. to be fair like we, we, we yeah we were at like we were like 80 at the start of this year like lo- late 70s early 80 or whatever so it's like we have grown 
want, but we want more. I want more subs. I want more recognition of how brilliant I am. I'm also really humble, okay? Let's get it done. Thank you. Appreciate it, though. Also, the whole support is great. It's as much of an arsehole as I sounded then. I love you guys. <laughs> Uh, but I think that's it. I think we're good. Can I go to bed now? It's like half two. I've been up since like six. Yeah. Um, but yeah, thank I you. Love this. It's it's been a train wreck of an episode. It's going to be a hell of a one to edit. But yeah. This epic hopefully. section was fun though. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoyed this. <laughs> Chaos theory. Hopefully next <laughs> week a Discord keeps up with us. That'll be fun. But we'll find out, I guess. At the same time, same place next week for more. But yeah. Until then, have an awesome week, guys. Halloween episode next week. <laughs> yeah, if my costume arrives. Um, that's all. That we'll find out next time, I guess. But yeah, until then, have an awesome week. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. See ya. Toodaloo.